I'm going to present um, the, the study. We've conducted together with three other clinics, two in the United States and uh, two in Sweden. We would tested this uh, new time-lapse medium uh, and pitched it against the, the sequential media uh, in a time-lapse setting. Uh, just before I sort of start my lecture, I just want to make a small disclosure that uh, I have to say that I, I personally do have, I don't have any commercial interest in any of the products that Vitalaf makes. It's important for me to say at least. Um, the, um, of course, everybody knows this, choosing the right embryo for an embryologist is sort of the, the golden ticket, if you like. We were just on a pro-con debate just recently and listening to if time-lapse is worth a damn at all. Uh, and there, are, there, were, there, were, there were some arguments against and some arguments uh, before it. But I think we have the, the obligation to try our best to, to select the best embryo f f for, for putting back to the uterus. And there have been many, many attempts to do so. For example, we have been involved, uh, and as many others, in trying to say, see if we can measure something for the media. Uh, and uh, as of yet, that, that those techniques, um, whether it being uh, mass spectroscopy or um, looking at uh, different amani acids, had not been sort of found their way into clinical practice yet. But that doesn't mean it doesn't work, but it hasn't, have, hasn't had an effect on clinical practice yet. The same can't be said about genetics. Of course, we all know that PGS, for example, is being used, uh, and perhaps by some overused, of course, but uh, at least that technique has evolved very rapidly from being a blunt instrument with just fish to, to these, these huge, huge advantages that, that some people see in, in the blastocyst blastos blastos biopsies and, and, and doing uh, PGS on, on, and on all chromosomes. So that technique has really made itself way into the, the lab. And of course, Time-lapse is that sort of the hot topic, and uh, some people say it's too hot. Uh, uh, but uh, that's a technique you can't sort of really avoid that's been introduced in the lab, and we have to sort of take into account that it's here, and it creates a vast possibilities, of course. Uh, whether or not it will improve the, the results of uh, the pregnancy results remains to be seen, but uh, there are at least many, many other advantages with, with time-lapse that, that uh, I think that... Uh, um, that sort of justifies the use of the technique. Uh, I, th I thought I was more or less the only one who sort of have, have, had discovered this, uh, <clears throat> this science paper, 29. We all think that uh, everything is new and what we're doing now, or sort of or 10 years before, is the new and hottest thing. And time lapse is something new, but of course it isn't. Um, I saw this at the pro-con debate just half an hour ago, that, that uh, there has been a publication in, in science in 29, I, I, it was almost sort of just 10 years after the invented cinematograph photography, and you're not going to read through the, all the text. It's just sort of to see that they described more or less all what, what we know today about embryo uh, development that was in the rabbit, of course, and they even had a comment here at the bottom where they speculated on we could use time-lapse sequences or, or differences in timings to, to, to speculate on the embryo quality. So these thoughts have been with us for a long time. As, as, a, as we, we sort of think 10, 15 years back, I, I think we'll all we recognize that uh, pain uh, from pain et al from, from, from um, Australia was sort of really the first real public publication describing uh, use, the use of time loss and how it could be used in following fertilization, for, for example. Uh, we had a small contribution in 2002, our group from Gothenburg and Sorgenska, we we managed to see that uh, the, fragmentation, the fragment, fragments were sort of absor absorbed and reabsorbed. Uh, and that was sort of shown by time lapse. It's difficult to see those things if you don't use time lapse. So a lot of um, sort of observational data in the beginning showing sort of uh, things that we couldn't see because uh, the embryo is so dynamic, we could see that with time lapse for the first time. And sort of, sort of slowly we've, we've worked our way in the publication into sort of more and more into the clinic. The, the, the devices have been come, become more and more uh, commercialized. And uh, now we're getting more clinical data from, from, from the use of time lapse, and we can sort of follow those, those, those publications. Uh, and, and you might, might add that in, in 2012 plus, I've just said, there's this huge amounts of data coming out. Um, so, why perform then a study using the new media? Uh, David has sort of more or less uh, outlined that for you in, in, in the previous slides, but um, I think that sort of we're all aware of, as I said. That, that is a great push for, 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 for that kind of media because uh, the time-lapse techniques itself 
sort of cries for it. You might argue that you would need this media anyway, but uh, at, uh, we, we, at least in our lab, we definitely, as we use timeless, we need media that we can be able to, to use in our laboratory to uh, enable us to take the full advantage of the timeless technique. It will, of course, mean a little bit less workload in the laboratory. We don't have to change the media, which is very good for us, of course. And I have to tell you that we are planning a randomized controlled trial, uh, the third one. I hope this will be successful, more successful than the other two, uh, where we, we want to look at how Timeless is doing, pitch that against uh, a, a normal culture. So, uh, of course, having a, a media with the same, with the same uh, take the media out of the equation, that, was, that would be a, a benefit for us in that study. So. How was this, this media designed? I've not been sort of involved in the design of the media myself. I think that's up to David and the Vita Lab team. But it's been designed uh, to, uh, to support the, the embryo the whole, whole time from day one to day six and to decrease the, the amino acid load in that respect to, to minimize the risk of ammonium buildup. They were done preclinical pre studies on, 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 on mice and looking at uh, viability and all the safety studies before we entered the human phase, which we, was also preclinical, where we thought up embryos on day two and, and looked at just uh, how, they would, how, we, how they were doing, if they uh, developed to the blastocyst stage or not, until we then uh, sought for ethical permissions and planned a clinical study, where, where again, we, we were uh, four clinics involved those ones here. And I want to acknowledge their, their participation, especially Dr. Marias Mantis, who had that clinic in Dallas, and uh, Mona Bungum uh, from, from the RMC in, in, in Malmö in Sweden, and Dr. Joe Conaghan in, in San Francisco. So I would like to sort of appreciate, make my appreciation known for their contribution. So thank you very much for that and, and your contribution. The uh, study design further was sort of, uh, it was a sibling uh, study where we randomized the, the, on day one, all fertilized oocytes. They were randomized into different culture systems, but they, they were cultured in using the, the, the time lapse technique, uh, both, both of them. They were, they were put in time lapse uh, in, in the wild dishes, uh, and we did a power calculation, of course, uh, where we found that we needed 128 patients to, to be able to detect. Uh, a non, well, not to detect a difference, sorry, it was a non-inferiority study, so uh, that, that uh, power analysis took that in, into account. So if we, our aim was to sort of prove that it was as, as good as, as the sequential media, we were pitching it against the, uh, the, the sequential media. We, we included both IVF and ICSI, uh, randomized on, on, on day one, and uh, either culture in GTL to day five or six. Uh, or, or change the medium day three in, in the, 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 the control group. And our primary endpoint was uh, embryo morphology, not uh, pregnancy rate, as this is a sibling study. So there was sort of good quality blastocysts on day five per randomized uh, oocyte or, or, or 2 pn. We had secondary embryos, of course, which was utilization rate, good quality embryos on day three, pregnancy and implantation rate. Pregnancy and implantation rates were, were more sort of a safety issue for us to, to just to. to to, to check out. Um, this, this is the primary endpoint. This is the, the, the more or less the result of the study. We found no differences between the, the two media types regarding good quality blastocysts. You can see that, that the, all the patients included, 128, we had uh, uh, almost 700 embryos in both arms, and uh, we had about 21% uh, versus 22% uh, good quality blastocyst rate in day, on day five which is the primary endpoint. And, uh, of course, we concluded that the aims of the study had been, been fulfilled. And this was an intention to treat uh, population, so all the patients were included. What about embryo development? You might think that, that you can detect something in the end of embryo development, and yes, we did. Uh, the only thing we detected, we look at, looked at uh, numerous things in the embryo development, but the only thing that uh, differed uh, uh, statistically was the number of good quality embryos on day three, which favored the uh, sequential system against the, 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 the uninterrupted culture medium, timeless medium. Um, that was not seen uh, on the blastocyst rate and not the good quality embryos on day five. So it was similar blastocyst rates on day five and, and the utilization rate, that is the embryos that go to, to either to transfer or, or, or in the freeze, was similar between the groups. So 
uh, whether or not what, what, what conclusion can be drawn from that, uh, we are, we're not sure, but uh, it, su it suggests that, that the G1 at least supports the, the embryos a little bit better into day, day three. That, that would be the sort of obvious conclusion to draw. Uh, as we did all of this, sort of the embryos were all cultured in time lapse. It was stupid, stupid if not to look at the, if there were any differences between the media types, looking at the, the normal, the usual. Um, uh, parameters when you when you compare um, time lapse and and these um, and there we didn't see anything any differences at all at uh, all that that's sort of in in in, in um, that's been shown by at least some groups that uh, compare media in that regard doesn't show any differences at least this and this confirms that these these two media types do not can can differ uh, significantly uh, when you look at these different time lapse uh, uh, annotations. What about pregnancy outcome then? Even if the study is definitely not powered to answer that question, we of course we have to have an obligation to follow up the pregnancies that have been caught. And not, 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 not all of our patients got embryo transfers, of course, due, due to the fact that perhaps they didn't have any good quality blastocysts to, to transfer. But uh, also, uh, there were several patients that had total freeze, that, so they, they, they got a frozen, they, 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 all, all their embryos were frozen. So of the 45 versus 39 uh, preg uh, transfers, We've got 19 uh, pregnancies in both groups giving us uh, the similar pregnancy rate, really. You can't say anything else about that, but at least that's sort of uh, something that, that, that uh, is, um, is for us important to know that not only look at morphology, of course, on day five, that tells you just one story. That tells you that the, the, the culture conditions are not killing your embryos, but you want them to, to create, create pregnancies, of course, so it's, a, uh, it's good, good to know. Uh, what about ammonium concentrations? And David has been saying this has been sort of a, at least for some, very, very important issue that, that you're afraid of uh, accumulating uh, ammonium. And at least I am a lab director, has always been uh, uh, looking, l listening to the selections and been, been, been terrified of that. And we, of course, we had to, to measure that. And um, uh, I haven't done the statistics on this one, but uh, this seems to be a significantly lower um, uh, rate of, of ammonium uh, concentrations in the GTL group, uh, which is for us uh, a bit good to know, because then we know that we can, can use the media at least in that respect safely. Uh, so, to conclude, I think that uh, we can, I can at least say, safely say that this new medium achieved the same level of blastocyst development utilization rate as, as the G G1, G2. It's sort of obvious, it's sort of not rocket science it's a, to, to, to recognize that. Clinical outcomes, the ones we did, not powered to answer that question, but at least they, they, they are not worse, they are, they are similar. And we have also shown that there's a low, low ammonium content in both media systems and a little bit lower than the GTL medium. So that's about it. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>